So my name is Jacob Westway and I'm a PhD student at James Cook University here in Cairns. I'm interested in anything microbiome, but at the moment specifically the microbiome to do with um, premature babies. The microbiome is the collection of all microbes that live on and inside us and we have this sort of symbiotic relationship with them where we help them by giving them a home and they help us. One of my primary advisors, Donna Rudd in Townsville, she has a good relationship with the neonatal intensive care unit in Townsville, so she's done lots of work with um, Dr. Yogi Kandasamy. Um, and they were both interested in pursuing that. Um, and so they applied for a, a grant, um, a CERTA grant down in Townsville, um, and that allowed them to start investigating the microbiome of those babies. So I sort of picked up that mantle and kept running with that. So I've explored the microbiome of those NICU babies in Townsville, uh, but now we want to compare the microbiome of those babies who actually receive a probiotic as part of standard care to babies here in the special care nursery in Cairns who actually don't receive a probiotic as part of standard care. And that's so the babies in towns will receive it if they're born less than 32 weeks and less than 1500 grams, so very fragile, small babies, um, especially care nurse babies, don't fulfill that criteria, but our thought is they're also still having a very hard start to life, um, so maybe probiotics will be of benefit to them as well. There is a lot in the literature that suggests it reduces the incidence of different diseases, um, most notably necrotizing enterocolitis, which affects premature babies disproportionately, um, and also like may help to prevent chronic diseases. And we do see differences in babies' um, microbiome. Um, it is a bit of a mixed bag in the literature, not all studies support it, um, but there are a lot of confounding variables. But it looks like the probiotics are altering the bacteria that actually live there, uh, both in what bacteria are present and the diversity, so a number of different types of microbes that are there. We will be working with um, clinicians here who will collect the, the samples for us, um, and then Pathology Queensland will send those away um, to James Cook Uni. Um, and then from there, I sort of take, over, take it up and um, extract DNA from poo samples, or fecal samples, um, and then we do sequencing. So 16S uh, RNA high throughput sequencing. Um, we're also going to do some metagenomics, which is, so the different sequencing techniques, essentially are just one is more accurate than the other. But the less accurate one allows us to look at more samples because it's cheaper. We can do the, the 16S sequencing, so on more samples, but um, less, so it's called sequencing depth here. Oh, we have to do that in Townsville, but we can do that through James Cook University. The metagenomics are actually sent off to Brisbane to a company called Microba. We have a, around 70 from the NICU. Um, so I mean, if we get close to that, that would be great. We already have 12 from the special care nursery um, that I've sequenced and everything. But I mean, if we could even double that number, that would be great because every baby, I guess, can skew the results ever so slightly if there's an overabundance or an underabundance or anything going on. So some, like, Interestingly, some variables that you would think, like say birth or, I'm trying to think of one that we're just looking at. Um, but I guess it's different for different variables. But like some may look like they're having more of an effect later on, like after a few months development. So the babies I've looked at already, we looked at emission and discharge, and you can see certain variables having more of an effect on their microbiome at discharge, which is interesting. We don't um, quite know why, but I mean, if it's something like neonatal, um, antibiotics, obviously that would make sense, right? Because they're getting a treatment regime during that time. But, but there is more interesting things like mode of delivery that still haven't affected at discharge, so. So there is some links, are there at least associations that have been made between certain treatments early on um, and chronic diseases later, and even things like um, vaginal delivery versus cesarean and things like that. So it's thought that maybe with probiotics helping to provide or produce a healthier microbiome that we may reduce the incidence of chronic disease. Um, that's sort of out of the scope for our study, but um, other people have sort of thought about looking at that. Anything from asthma to even just obesity, um, things along those lines. I'm very thankful, I guess. Um, so if we didn't get this grant, we would just be making a comparison between 12 babies and 70. And it's um, statistically, um, it doesn't really say much. So, so it makes a big difference. It's a big step forward to produce more robust data and be able to say with a lot more confidence that differences we are seeing are actually true.